Hi there, I'm back uh, to do the second part of the question, like I said. Um, the second pool in that question, it says the water level uh, was four and three eighths feet deep. So I'm gonna write that down, four and three eighths feet deep. Uh, and part B says the water in the third pool is two and three fourths feet deeper than the second pool. What is the total depth? Okay, so our second pool is that four and three eighths right there. It says that the third pool is two and three fourths feet deeper. So there are your two depths right there. But we need to think about what deeper means. Does that mean we're gonna add, subtract, multiply, or divide with these fractions? I don't know. What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna draw a picture. And you guys know from in class that Mr. Cox is not an artist. So bear with me on this, all right? All right, this is gonna be pool two, which we said was four and three eighths. All right, there's my picture of the pool. All right, so four and three eighths feet deep. Now, the surface is gonna go up higher for pool number three because it said it was two and three fourths feet deeper. So let me adjust my drawing. All right, so it says pool three, two and three fourths. <clears throat> so there's my picture. All right, now, if we wanna find the total depth, which is what they're saying, what do you think that we should do with those two fractions or two mixed numbers? Add, I think that's a good idea, let's try it. Now. Hopefully you're thinking that if I'm gonna add those two fractions, I need a common denominator. That's right, good job, I hear you. All right, so my denominators are four and eight, and I think I can make that four become an eight pretty easily. Let's try. I count by fours, I would go four, eight, that's right, good job. And then on my numerator up here, I'm gonna count by threes, so I would go three, six, good job. Circle fractions that have the common denominators. So I'm gonna add uh, four and two for my whole numbers, and then I'm gonna add three and six for my numerators too. Let's see here, I'm gonna get six and nine eighths. All right, now, I had a lot of you guys turn that in as an answer, six and nine eighths. And in fact, I sent an email to Manny Holm about that, and I said, hey Manny, is there any way that you can change that so that we don't have an improper fraction? And he said, yeah, Mr. Cox, I can do that. So this is what he did. He realized that 9 eighths was made up of 8 eighths plus one more eighth. Okay. In other words, this 9 eighths is the same exact thing as those two things. Now, what's cool about that is that 8 eighths is large enough to be another whole. So that 6 is going to now become... You guessed it, seven holes, and we have one eighth left over. All right, so our new number is going to become not six, but seven and one eighth that was left over. So we're going to write it like that um, for our final answer of seven and one eighth. All right, if you have questions about that, let me know. Email me, message me on Schoology, and I'd be happy to go over it a little bit more in depth with you. Have a good afternoon. Bye.